Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I've got my seed order in from Vessi Seeds and I'm not going to do an unboxing video. Uh, I find those dreadful to watch and I don't like making them either. But I am going to show you one thing. I'm anxious to get out my garden and get planting but I got a bit of a problem, right? Everything's frozen and if you've been watching me I'm always talking about different tricks for uh, lengthening the season, getting things thawed out early, keeping things from freezing too much over the winter, all that sort of stuff, right? It's all, for me, it's not about extending the season in the fall, it's about getting the season started um, in the spring so that you can make the most of your July and August sun and heat, because those are the only two good months we've got. Uh, April tends to be rainy, May tends to be rainy, <laughs> and if you've got rain, it means it's overcast, and you're not getting as much direct light as you as you might want, especially where I live with my uh, proximity to the uh, coastline. So I got one thing here that I think is a great little uh, trick to have up your sleeve, right? I've got domes in my garden. I mean, I've done lots of videos on different things I use to warm the soil up ahead of time, get things germinating ahead of time, and if you follow me, you notice that I don't do transplants inside. I try to direct seed as much as I can things out in the garden because I just find plants do better when they're germinated outdoors. They're getting the full spectrum of light from the sun from day one. Right? I think that makes a huge difference in uh, how well your plants can do over the course of the growing season, especially if your growing season is short or if you're challenged by a lack of direct sunlight. So, I ordered these. And no, my sponsor Vessies didn't put, they just let me do whatever I want. I, I put it in order and they, they send me what I ask for. They're, they're great. Um, I saw these on their online website, these uh, garden cloche, cloche, cloche. I don't know exactly sure how to pronounce that. It's the French word, C-L-O-C-H-E-S. Um, this is the uh, medium cloche, set of six. Uh, it's 1895. So there's, there's, there's six of these, right? You get six and you can stack them in the, in, and they store them very easily. And I assume the last multiple seasons, uh, I guess you can, if you're apprehensive about buying them, you can watch and see how well they stand up for me. Um, so, why I'm excited to use these, I don't think these are ideal for every kind of plant. I think there's certain kind of plants that these are ideally suited to. Um, and where, how I plan to make use of these in my garden this year, and I'm really excited to try it. And this is something I've, I've thought about doing every year, and then I keep putting it off, and then I don't get around to it, and then it's too late to get that thing planted, and, and, and uh, it just uh, it has to wait till the next year. So this year I'm going to do it. Um, I have a garden that's fenced in, and it's fenced in because um, my garden backs onto a forested area. And without the fence, uh, rabbits, deer, porcupine, raccoons, <laughs> everything comes in and eats all my food and there's nothing left for Greg. So uh, I don't like that, so I have a fence. But I have found, if you're an avid gardener, if you've been gardening for years, uh, you probably find that whatever your garden is, you want it to be bigger and you want it to grow <laughs> even more, right? Um, so, they're, they're, you know, you just want to keep expanding. So I got my fence. I don't want to, it was a lot of work to build the fence and I built it at the height of uh, horsefly season, which was a uh, challenge in and of itself. But anyway, I, I've expanded my garden to outside the enclosure and I've got various uh, hula culture beds that I've built and there's certain plants you can plant uh, outside an enclosure and uh, deer and things like that won't bother them. And I found squash. Uh, pumpkins and you know, acorn squash and those sorts of things, right? Generally, at least in my experience, they leave that stuff alone. I, I had one uh, pumpkin this year, had a few bites out of it. It looked like it had been bitten by a bear, just by the the, the kind of bites were in it. But it 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 took it took like two bites and left it and never came back. <laughs> right? I mean, I left the squash out there for about a month after I saw that bite, and they didn't come back for another bite. So they tried it, they didn't like it, they're not going to try it again. So uh, I think there's, those things are safe outside in a garden enclosure. Where this comes in is that I've got a, a hill adjacent to my garden. It's south facing. I mean, by calling it a hill, it's basically just a mound of, 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 of you know, uh, clay and rock and stuff like that. It's, it's not even very particularly the good soil. But it's, it's south facing and it's a hill. And I was out in my garden just the other day and there's snow everywhere and the ground's covered in ice and, and uh, a lot of it's still not uh, thawed out. But I looked at halfway up that hill, it's completely thawed out. There's no snow, there's no ice, it's bare earth, right? So that tells me 
that that part of my garden gets more sun than anywhere else because it's melted <laughs> right it, it had just as much snow as anywhere else but it's thawed so it must be getting more sun it's, it's higher it's more prominent right um, now there's challenges and maybe it doesn't get quite as good water but I've noticed if you look at the hill um, if you it, let's pretend that it's not just a tiny hill let's pretend it's a mountain because let's pretend you're like a little frog looking at the hill it would be a mountain well there's like little tiny river type areas there, there's places on that hill where the water tends to go down so I'm thinking I can use that like a natural uh, irrigation right so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pick spaces I'm going to you know pick a space about I don't know two feet by two feet right 50 cent you know 50 60 centimeters by 50 centimeters sort of thing pick a spot like that the ground is really hard there it's all clay and rock and stuff like that pick a small space like that pickaxe it up you know and put some uh, horse manure in there just some aged horse manure and some a bit of soil but basically aged horse manure and then in the very center of the aged horse manure put a little you know circle about this big about the size of the bottom of this cloche right of good compost earth sort of thing right and then I'll put the squash put two or three squash seeds in there put the cloche on do that maybe two three four weeks ahead of the scheduled last or predicted last frost date right and just let that thing germinate and grow underneath this little dome right and then you know, it's got a little vent so you can cool it down and then once the plants too big for this we should be past the last I can guarantee <laughs> but we'll be past the last frost date Right, so then I can just take this thing off and put it in the shed and keep it there for next year. So I, I think this will probably last multiple years because you're only going to really have it. I and mean, it's supposed to be, you, you know, long-lasting PVC, some sort of, uh, you know, I don't know how, how UV resistant it is. But you're only going to have it out there for maybe six, six to eight weeks, right? You're not having it out all year. You have it outside for six to eight weeks and then you put it in your shed out of the sun, right? So it, sh it should last multiple years. Um, one thing it has, a little feature, is I don't know if you can see this from the camera, but it's got little holes all the way around it, right? And that's for these, uh, it comes with these little uh, tent peg things, right? So you can put the tent peg through the hole to, to keep the wind from getting underneath it. I think it's, it's a fairly wind resistant structure, as all domes are, right? The wind sort of hits it and bounces off and pushes it down, if anything. But they've got those holes for pegs anyway, and because it, all my gardens are mulched anyway, the, I will have these sitting on the bare earth pretty much, except for uh, I'll have a thin mulch where I have the uh, seeds sown. But then the area surrounding this, I'll have maybe two inches of mulch. So this will actually be beneath the mulch layer directly on the soil. So there'll be mulch right up against it, holding it down. Also sealing it in a sense. To keep to create an even more of a microclimate where maybe there's some on a hot day there's condensation and it just drips back down into the soil right so I don't have to water it as often well, I'm really excited to try this experiment I'm 99 I'm always optimistic I mean gardeners I think gardeners are optimistic person uh, people every harebrained idea I get I think is going to be gangbusters so you can follow me through with this and see how it works um, but I'm very excited about uh, giving this a try this year. So uh, if you haven't thought of this method before, um, maybe give it a try this year, especially if you've got a new area. Because the great thing about having the new area, uh, so I'm go going to uncultivated land, and I'm going to take a little patch of earth, two by two, scuff that up, put some you know, amendments in it, some horse manure basically, something I can get for free. And then the pumpkin will sprawl out, right, all over the place. And it, the vines don't care that they're not on cultivated land. See, it's a waste of space to plant a squash in a prepared bed. I've got lots of nice, you know, 4x8, four 4x10 by four by prepared beds in my garden, but it is a waste of that space. And I'm speaking to people that have lots of room, okay? If, you, if you're confined, you, you've got to go vertical. You've got no other options. But i got, you know, almost two acres of land, so it doesn't really matter here, even though I only use a fraction of that for my garden. Um, but the, gut, the pumpkin itself, the roots only need a relatively small space, right? They'll just spread it underneath all that. Uh, it's the, the vines that need all the space. So, I mean, one pumpkin or t two pumpkin, two, two large squash plants or pumpkin plants will fill a four by eight bed. I mean, the foilage, right? If you're, keep, if you're trying to keep the foilage 
within the confines of the bed. The, the, the plants will go to the edge of the bed and you'll, you'll turn the vine and, and turn the vine again and you know the, the, the foliage will completely fill the bed. So it's, it's not the right space for planting something like that. Right? That's a good place to plant carrots and parsnips and spinach and kale and onions and right? things that sort of are tight and go up and don't use up a lot of room. Right? Or, uh, beans and things like that. Things that can be compactly put together. Sprawling plants, uh, it's kind of a waste of space if you think about it to put them in a cultivated garden. I think even, I might even try growing uh, carrot, or, uh, carrots, tomatoes in this because tomatoes can sprawl out. All right, so the idea is the plant's actually growing in that little bit of cultivated earth I've got, but then the vines are just going out over all the weedy areas. And the vines don't care about the weeds. Right? If anything, they, they sort of almost swim or they float above the weeds. And, uh, you know, I've done experiments like this in the past, uh, not using this same approach, but basically planting squash on the edge of a garden bed and letting it sprawl out over the grass, right? They, they do fine, right? And they can just go wherever they want. And, and I think in general, they're going to go towards where they're going to... If you let them decide where they're going to go, they're going to go... Um, to the best place for them, right? They're going to follow the sun. They're going to be drawn to the sun, I would imagine. Um, so it's sort of an ideal way to set this thing up, right? So I think it'll work really, really well. And that way you're not, you're making the most of the space you have instead of planting uh, your, your squash in your, your sort of cultivated, prepared earth. Um, if, if the plant only needs a certain amount of space for its roots, but an incredible amount of space for its vines, I guess it's a better way to put it, um, why put that plant in a, a sort of confined, cultivated box? Use that for something that you can make the most of that space with. So putting this out in the sort of wilderness <laughs> where there's lots and lots of sun and infinite room for it to go in any direction it, it wants, why not do it that way? So I'm very excited about this and I can't wait to give it a try. Um, I hope that's uh, given you a good idea. If you've tried this before and you've used these before, please uh, put a comment in the comment section. If you know how to pronounce this word, <laughs> That would be handy. I guess I could look it up. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just being ridiculous here. But um, anyway, I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGarden.com. Don't forget to click the bell um, in the YouTube thing. If, if, if you subscribe, if you want to know when I drop a new video, click the little bell thing. And, and Otherwise, you won't get any sort of indication. If that's interesting to you, uh, please do that. Um, until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.